everybody welcome back to our channel if you haven't subscribed yet go ahead and hit that subscribe button so today I'm gonna do a labor and delivery story um, this is something that's very emotional and very I guess a touchy subject as it is for some women and um, I went to my 40 week appointment and they're like yeah you haven't really dilated or anything so let's go ahead and schedule your induction day at the hospital it was like not even a week later it was like maybe like four days later and but try to you know get your baby out so i ate pineapple i bounced on the exercise ball i got this bath bomb from lush and nothing worked nothing worked at all bentley did not want to come out so we went to the hospital on august 1st 2018 uh, my induction time was six in the morning went in did our paperwork all that got settled in and i got started on pitocin um Shortly after I started, I had, I had like some cramping and stuff, like, you know, little contractions and you know how you can hear the baby's heart rate on the monitor. Well, you know, his heart was strong. He's, he's always had a strong heart and he's always so healthy and, um, it was beating and it, it, it dropped down to 90, 90 beats per minute. And so, you know, the doctors come in like, all right, well, we gotta stop it and wait an hour. He probably should react to it. You know, he'll be fine. Um, so just wait an hour and we'll see how he does that time. So I was like, okay, you know, I'm freaking out, but I'm like, okay. So, um, we waited an hour, started it again and the same thing happened. And I was again having those contractions and same thing happened. His heart rate dropped to 50 this time. 50, y'all, like really dropped. And like I said, I could hear his heart on the monitor and it was just, I mean, it was so slow and like, you know, I was so used to hearing my baby's heart just going so fast, fast, fast. Like, you know, I mean, like a baby, you know, they have a fast heart. It was just so slow. And it was so painful to hear. Um, my mom was with me, my, my mom and George, of course. And they were in the room and they're freaking out. So I was freaking out. And the nurse was like, okay, you gotta breathe, you gotta relax. I'm like, how do I relax? Like, I know I needed to, but I just couldn't. I couldn't, I thought I was gonna lose my, lose my baby. like. Oh, anyway, so they put me on a double oxygen mask and they're like, you need to have a C-section right now. It's like, okay. I, I didn't, I didn't know anything about C-sections. I wasn't prepared, but I guess you can always be prepared for everything. So, um, I can only have one person with me. And of course, George came with me. Um, he was trying to stay really calm, but you know, I mean, there's just some things you can't hide. So we went back. Um, I was already, you know, in my hospital gown. They had me put a hairnet on um because it has to be a very sterile clean environment and um george had to be dressed in scrubs head to toe so they had me go back into the operating room and um i had to get a spinal block it's about a three inch needle in my back to numb me from about about here down um so he couldn't be in the room while i got that but he came in the room immediately after so I got that, it was very hard. I mean, it's a cold operating table. I was by myself, I was shaking, I was scared. All I wanted was him by my side and my baby in my arms and I, I couldn't have that. So it, that was just very hard getting that without him because he's been my support. I mean, George went to literally every single appointment when I was pregnant, every single appointment, every single one. <laughs> so it was just like, it was really hard not having him there. So anyway, so that was shot. I laid on the operating table. They had a curtain from about here down, so I couldn't see anything at all. And George was right by my head. And, you know, I'm crying and I'm panicked, but I'm trying to calm down. I was just ready to see my baby and hold him. And I told him, I said, as soon as you hear our baby, as soon as you see him come out, go see him. Don't worry about me. Please, please go see our baby. That's literally what I told him. I just looked at him and I said, please go see our baby. Like, just please, please go see him. That's what he did. And so I was laying there and I felt them. I felt them kind of, I mean, I was numb, but you still feel it. So it was just like, it was pain. And he was just, he was so sweet. He was like stroking, my hair was in the hairnet, but he was like little parts that were out. He's like doing that. And he was like trying to calm me down and stuff. Um, but um, yeah, so about probably like 15, 20 ish minutes later, um, they're like, okay, well, it's gonna be a lot of pressure. I was like, okay, pressure, I can do this. It's not pain. It was pain. <laughs> I mean, it was pain and pressure, but it was just a lot. It felt like they were just like pushing, pushing, pushing on my stomach. 
and it lasted probably about 15 seconds and I was struggling to breathe because I mean they're just pushing and you're, you're trying to breathe but you just can't so um that happened and then immediately Bentley came out I heard his little cry he cried for probably about five seconds and then he stopped and I like and George had already gone over there like I told him to and I looked at the nurse that was over here I was like is he okay I was like what's wrong is he okay is he okay and she like looked over the curtain she's like yeah he's fine he's just staring at his daddy and I was like oh my gosh and all the nurses afterwards told me that he just stopped because he saw his daddy and he's just staring at his daddy and I just know that was pure love in his eyes I just know it anyway so so they weighed him. He was six pounds, four ounces. He was born at 929 in the morning. Um, just, just perfect, 19 inches long. Um, so after they weighed him and just, he, they didn't bathe him yet because it was still too early. They still kind of wiped, wiped him down. George cut his umbilical cord, which I was really glad he was able to do. I was worried he wasn't able to do that because of my C-section. Um, did that and I got to hold him. I will definitely post pictures at the end of the video. I held him for the first time. Um, when you have a C-section, or at least in my experience, they literally strap down your arms. So I don't know if it's because they don't want you to jump up and like do stuff or I don't know, but they had my arms like strapped down like that. So they unstrapped them and I held him on my chest and literally the best feeling in the world. Like everything I went through made it so worth it, so worth it. And he is everything we've ever wanted and some like, I love my baby so much. Anyway. I made it almost through the whole video without crying, so I'm gonna keep going. So, he was born, everything was perfect. He was perfect, everything was fine. I go in the recovery room, um, not recovering, postpartum area, and I get in our room, get settled, my mom meets him. She absolutely loves him. She still loves him to this day, mom. If you're watching this, I love you and I appreciate how much you love Bentley. She loves him so much. Um, so, we went in there, she met him um, a few hours later, my grandpa came and then some of George's family came and we had, it was great. I mean, I was feeling pretty, you know, I was a little disappointed that I had a C-section because it's definitely not what I planned. But I know, like I said, you can't always plan this stuff, but I just kind of feel like I kind of failed. Um, so that was just really hard mentally, but I was so glad to see my baby and I was just, oh my gosh, so, so in love with my baby. Um. So yeah, I had a catheter in. So by the second day, I stayed in the hospital for three days. Um, by this, the second day they took my catheter out, I was able to walk around a little bit. It was very, very painful, but they said, you know, it would help. So after I had my baby, who was perfect, um, I did have a little complication. So the nurses change as they do in the hospital and every nurse i had had at the hospital was amazing the nurse that i got wasn't a fan of but she kind of she came in and she was like okay well you need to shower you need to do a lap around there was like a little like i don't describe it but she kind of like made me like walk the halls of the uh, postpartum area and she was okay you need to do all that and it's gonna make you feel better so i was like okay i mean she's my nurse of course and she was like, you need a shower. I was like, okay. I mean, I really didn't want to because I was in a ton of pain. I could barely move. And but I was like, okay, I'll do it. And moving was very painful. Like, George had to help me take off my clothes to get the shower because I was in so much. It just hurt so much. I remember trying to, like, wash my hair. I could barely lift my arm. My body was just so sore, so painful. So, anyway, took my shower. Got through it. A week later, I go home and I am crying in pain. Crying. Horrible pain. And my incision is red and it's hot to the touch. Guess what guys, it was infected. Hmm. So we go to my OBGYN and I'm like, listen, like I don't know what happened, blah, blah, blah. And turns out I shouldn't have showered. The nurse told me to shower and I shouldn't have. So I literally had to have my incision reopened. My mom had to put a wet packing in it every 24 hours. And I had to let my incision heal from the inside out. So yes, I saw the inside of my stomach. And I didn't say this before, but I got 17 staples for my C-section. And apparently I shouldn't have showered with the staples. I didn't know that because a nurse literally told me to shower. I had no idea. So it was definitely, it was definitely on the hospital and the nurse. And it was really disappointing because I had a pretty good experience 
besides that and like a few other minor things so it just i was just, i was devastated and it slowed my healing down a lot i wasn't able to get out of bed for a very long time george had to help me out of bed or my mom every single day so that was just very very stressful so it was just a lot of emotional mental stuff to it i did have postpartum depression as well as i got very very bad anxiety after i had bentley um i went to the doctor they, they did say i have ptsd from it um but i have the most amazing baby and i love him so much but it's just it was a lot and especially the nurse thing it was like that could have been avoided i feel like if you read my chart and you kind of knew what you were doing but then i had a lot of hatred towards that nurse in the hospital because it just really slowed down my healing i couldn't even take care of my baby because i couldn't take care of myself it was a lot of pain a lot of emotional tolls to it um i mean like i said i literally saw the inside of my stomach and my mom had to press a wet packing into it every single day like it was it was just a lot it was really a lot which i know that's how childbirth i know it's a lot i'm not saying that i'm just saying it was just a lot and i hate that that nurse did that but i've come to my i've come to terms with it i really really have because i've been working on it it's just, you know, I just gotta let it go because I have this beautiful son that I love more than anything in the world. And it's crazy. I was telling someone this other day. I would do it a million times over for him. Every single part of it. Like, I don't regret anything. You know, it's just, it is what it is. So, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I hope this gives you guys a little bit more insight on our life and, you know, my whole situation and what happened. And I will catch you guys on our next video. Thank you. Man, do you like your pants? I think he just rolled his eyes at me. <laughs> he said, you like your bath and he rolled his eyes.